no 5,000. Whatever amount of money you spend, it's okay, that's yours. But us guys, mm -hmm. courtesy of Safaricom, are going to give you 3,000 bob. Okay? Mm -hmm. All you need to do is to do us. Is you need to mm. dial star five four four hash. Mm -hmm. You see, item number four is mm. go monthly. You mm. now write number four and send. Mm. It'll come back and it'll give you the different options of which one you can pick. Blah mm. blah. You pick the one for two thousand shillings a month. You pick the one for all in one first. All in one, sorry, yes. all in one. It goes. Mm. Then you look through, and the one for two thousand shillings is where you get all these wonderful things that we've talked about. Mm. You click, you subscribe, you go. Send us a screenshot that you've done it on our socials, inside the DM. Yes. You could win 3,000 bob. Like that. Imagine. Yep. Mm. Like that. Our next conversation is about consumer protection. Okay? Now, when such companies like Safaricom say, oh, if you do this, you get 19, 17, 19 GB or 17 GB or 500 GB or 500 meters or 1,000. If you don't get what they've said, what rights do you have as a consumer to go and tell them? I didn't get. Uh, so you occupy. If a company says it's telling you, water and they've written down the bottle it's 500 ml well, you and, and you go and you measure and you find it is 485 ml <laughs> what you do also you know those are just the obvious ones there are very many other things that actually the law uh, puts to safeguard the rights of consumers do we know them we're going to know them by the end of this hour or the Aquom is a consumer policy and regulatory Compliance expert, he's our guest for the next hour. Good morning, Odiambo. Uh, good morning. Everyone. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh -huh. How about yourself? Salama Kabisa. Good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Very good. Happy to be back. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, as a consumer protection and rights uh, expert, I want to tell you something about consumers. Mm -hmm. I want you to be a consumer. Yes. Of the NCBA Loop lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, NCBA Loop lifestyle. Yes. All right. Great. If you go to Play Store uh -huh. or App Store, uh huh. Just search loop. Okay. You will see loop. Loop. Eh? Eh? Okay. It comes, it's an app. Uh, what color is this? This is orange. Well done. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an orange in color. It looks like L. Uh -huh. Download. Download the L. All right. Download it. Loop. Loop. So once you download, uh -huh. then it tells you now, set it up and sign up. Mm -hmm. Sign up. It'll ask you those basic uh, the details. sign up details yeah. okay. all right your name mm -hmm. first name last name okay. your id number your email address and so on and so forth and then it will tell you okay now we'd like to because we are regulated by the cbk mm -hmm. we have the know your customer uh, details that you have to do. Uh -huh. one of them is a scanned copy of your id okay. just like there you do if you go walk into a bank they tell you so you bring a copy of your id so they'll tell you just Take a photo of your ID front page mm -hmm. and then back page, and then they'll say, okay, so we want to validate. So what we see, this is what we have uh, from the government. Mm -hmm. Your first name, your last name, blah, 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 correct, correct. This is your ID number, correct, correct. So you're the one, correct, correct. Now we are sending you uh, an activation code on your email. Okay. The email that you provided, they'll send you a code. You just go in there and you activate. All right. Once you activate, my friend, mm -hmm. get into the lifestyle. All right, sounds good. Simple like that. <laughs> what do you now do, Ndu? Mm. What do there you do? There are many things that you can do, yeah. actually. You can pay your utility bills, same place, move money from your account to your wallet. You can set up standing orders. You can make sure that you're, um, if you're looking for an overdraft, you can do all of that right there. Get a personal loan, all of these things. If you're in business, you can pay your merchants, pay and, and also set up deliveries for your clients. You can... Um, um, also advertise your goods and products right here on loop so you can imagine all of this in this mm. circular way of getting business done getting your personal things set up you can do all of that on loop and mm -hmm. we can give 5,000 Bob if you download take the next six hours mm -hmm. just download the <laughs> yeah. thing mm -hmm. send a screenshot Edward Quatch on a spice, spice drive tonight all right you could win 5,000 shillings with Edward Evo two. Evo download, two. download 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 Sounds very convenient, sounds very enticing, mm -hmm. <laughs> and post probably worth it. Yeah. Loop it. <laughs> Loop it. Yes. All Your right. name is Odiambo. Odiambo. Loop is a lifestyle. <laughs> uh, we'll have to conform <laughs> with all those things that we associated with. Very good. Especially where I come from. Very good. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Now, let me yes. welcome you with today's proverb. 
uh, CT sent us the proverbs and said he's away, he's relaxing. All right. To right. Simsumbue. So he gave us the proverbs in mm -hmm. advance. Mm -hmm. This week the proverbs have been from Libya. Oh, okay. Yes. Today's proverb uh -huh. is uh, very simple, very straightforward. It says, in the house of a man who has been hanged, uh -huh. do not talk of rope. In the house of a man who's been hanged, uh -huh. don't talk of rope. Absolutely. I wouldn't really want to talk of a rope in the house of a man who's been hanged. Mm. I mean, you know the kind of emotions, uh, the kind of pain that uh, such can uh, draw, especially from, uh, let's say, his next of kin, his loved ones, and things like that. Mm. So uh, you, you really have to be very cautious on the kind of, uh, you know, subjects that uh, you, 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 you bring about in the course of conversations with people who are grieving mm. uh, for that matter. Mm. So I would be very, very cautious uh, because the rope by itself is, is the instrument. I would want to believe that was the instrument that was used mm. to bring about death. Mm. So uh, I would be very cautious to speak about uh, ropes and things like that in, such a, con in such a scenario. Very good. Yeah. Don't be cautious, cautious to speak about consumer rights. <laughs> okay. Because that's why you're here today. Absolutely. And that's what you do for a living. What do you do actually for a uh, For a living. <laughs> <laughs> Professionally, I'm a lawyer. Yes. All right. But as it is, I'm more into uh, public policy and uh, regulatory compliance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and all of this feature within the space of governance. Mm. Yes. So, speaking about consumers, uh -huh. how many pieces of legislation mention consumers or are thinking about consumers? Well, at the moment, we have got two prominent legislations that speak to consumer interest, uh, I mean, consumer interest in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have the Consumer Protection Act, mm -hmm. which basically is a, the law that uh, was formulated pursuant to Article 46 of the 2010 Constitution. Mm -hmm. But before that, we also, uh, I mean, in August of 2010, uh, we came up with the Competition Act. Mm -hmm. The Competition Act basically establishes the Competition Authority of Kenya, but the Competition Authority of Kenya deals with quite a number of issues relating to products liability, competition in the market, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, for the sake of credit transactions and for which, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the Consumer Protection Act of 2012 uh, speaks to, uh, you find that it is more or less regulated mm. under this uh, 2012 Act and uh, not under the 2010 Act that uh, provides for the Competition Authority of Kenya. Mm. That is not to say that the Competition Authority of Kenya does not have, uh, I mean, does not have the ability, if not uh, systems for dealing with com uh, consumer claims mm. in the country. Mm. When you say consumer protection, yes. what exactly do we mean? Uh, consumer protection is just about the marketplace. We're looking at the marketplace and the fairness that ideally should be associated with the marketplace when it comes to the buying of goods and goods and services mm -hmm. from the standpoint of a consumer. Mm -hmm. All right. Or from the standpoint of a buyer. Okay. So, yeah. So this is not dealing at all mm -hmm. with uh, the vendor. It's not about the vendor as such. Okay. It is about the consumer and the interest of the consumer and the kind of protections that the consumer is afforded in law. Uh, and all of this stems from Article 46 of the Constitution. But in any event, we also have got international instruments uh, from the United Nations. For instance, we've got the United Nations guidelines on consumer protection that provide for standards relating to how the laws, rules, institutions for the protection of consumer protection should, 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 I mean, should, should uh, basically be established and in any event applied. Okay. Yes. So what protections do consumers then benefit from? If we're looking at it from a large scale today, mm -hmm. and are we looking at this consumption across board of product? All right. Mm -hmm. I've, well, uh, consumer protection applies across products, liability. I mean, uh, and, and uh, we also have issues around uh, health, infrastructure. If you, have, if you have to go into the specifics of it, mm. you, you'd, you'd find yourself going into issues like products liability, products liability, competition, uh, uh, safety, you know, like CABS, for instance, mm. uh, the Kenya Bureau of Standards. It's established under the Standards Act, but what does it do? All right? Mm. Things to do with, uh, I mean, when we were growing up, uh, and I'm sure 
possibly Eric can relate with this. Mm. Remember those kilos that we used to have, eh? mm. those weighing machines. Yes. We used to have weighing machines mm. that at times you, you, when, when your mother sent you to the shop, she would tell you to watch out and see if somebody has put a penny, you know, the yes. penny in the 10 cent, mm. just to ensure that uh, you're given an that the doesn't fall. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. so all of those things come into play, you know, and uh, the fact of the matter is that prior to 2010, uh, we had uh, quite a number of laws which try to speak to consumer protection, but never go to speak to it in the manner that uh, the law that has been done under and, uh, Article 46 of the Constitution uh, speaks to consumer protection. Why I say so is that uh, you'd have to look at the Weights and Standards Act, mm -hmm. Weights and Measures Act, the Standards Act, restrictive uh, uh, compet restrictive, what is it called, restrictive competition or something like that, act, mm -hmm. all of those, you'd have to look at them. But then, the problem with those legislations was the fact that they provided for criminal sanctions when mm -hmm. it comes to violations of consumer interest, if not rights, mm -hmm. all right? But with the coming of the 2010 Constitution, Article 46, and in any event, the formulation of laws that have one, one way or the other tried to relate consumer protection from the standpoint of the transformation of justice or transformative justice that the Constitution brings about, you realize that it is not just about criminal sanctions anymore. Mm -hmm. There are other redress mechanisms, including compensation, you know, for it, uh, as one way of redress. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to prove the fact that your rights have been violated, then as a matter of fact, one of the things, and we shall get into the details of it, uh, compensation is one such uh, avenue for redress. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay. Do consumers understand their rights from your perspective? Well, b based on the survey that was done by the Consumer Protection uh, Advisory Board Committee, which is established under Section 89 of the Act, uh, they did a survey about in 2019, 2020. Mm. And then, I mean, unfortunately, from that survey, it indicated that uh, up to 82% of Kenyans are not aware of their consumer rights. Uh, up to? 82% of Kenyans are not aware of that. 75%, uh, I mean, 75% at least are aware or, I mean, are aware of, uh, I mean, 75% Okay, 82% are not aware of their rights. 75% mm. are not even aware of the existence of the rights of, of, of the Consumer <laughs> Protection Act mm. and things like that. Mm. Yeah. So, so, so from the statistics, you can actually get to see what you're dealing with. So, give us an example, like mm -hmm. really down to the ground example. I'm buying mm -hmm. what? Oh, let's take something that's in the thing today. Oil. I'm buying oil, and how do I know what I can? Um, make a complaint over as concerns my rights, what would I have to see? What discrepancy would there need to be for me to come out and say, look, there's a problem, and whom am I going to? Okay. Um, you, you, you see, that, that might also, uh, I mean, relate to products liability and things like that. <clears throat> as a consumer, generally, what you're trying to say is that one of the things that you're assured of as a consumer is fairness and safety accessibility and things like that when it comes to the market. So for issues to do with oil and things like that, of course, there's, there are standards that are prescribed mm -hmm. uh, for purposes of, uh, you know, or, or for purposes of the kind of oil that can be sold in Kenya and mm -hmm. things like that. So mm -hmm. cabs would have to play a very prominent role in assessing such kind of uh, situations, especially complaints that might arise from people who are saying, from a safety perspective, we were sold items mm -hmm. or, you know, things mm -hmm. that do not conform or rise to the level of safety mm -hmm. in terms of consumption and things like that. But uh, in the context of what Kenyans easily relate with and for which uh, the act has in a very manifest manner addressed mm -hmm. itself to are credit transactions. And credit transactions are basically, you know, these credit agreements mm -hmm. where it's all about monies. Mm -hmm. uh, one is loaning money and the other is being loaned money yeah. and the kind of things that come with that. In that space, we've, there are quite a number of rights that are guaranteed in law but unfortunately, going back to the statistics that have been pointed out by the Kenya Consumer, I mean the Kenya Consumer uh, Advisory Committee, mm -hmm. uh, Consumer Protection Advisory Committee, you get to see that Kenyans get into credit transactions and they're not aware of their rights. Mm -hmm. For instance, 
uh, they are, you know, you've got the right to revoke a credit agreement uh, just based on the fact that uh, the other party and the dominating party for that matter uh, has committed an unfair trade practice. It is provided for in law. Goja, 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 <laughs> goja. Yes. So you've gone to this mm -hmm. institution that yes. lends money to yes. you, yes. all right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be a commercial bank, a microfinance institution, yes. a deposit taking or ever circle, yes. or even the mobile lenders who are now under the ambit of the central bank. Yes. You take some money from them, mm -hmm. credit, mm -hmm. and you sign an agreement. Yes. At some point, you can say sleepy. Yes. Because yeah. the lender has done something. What could that something be? It is in law. <laughs> it is in law. Mm. Section 12, 13, 14, 15 of the Consumer Protection Act. Mm. Right? And um, if you look at Section 12, mm. the Section 12 of the Act, and uh, I mean, I can make reference to it. Yes. You know, if you have, <laughs> it was in front of you. But Section 12 of the Act, all right, uh, from basically from uh, Section 13, sorry, mm -hmm. from Section 13 of the Act, it talks of unfair practices, all right? And one of the unfair practices under Section 13 of the Act is false representation. And false representation is anything that is misleading, anything that is uh, basically anything that is false, misleading, or deceptive in terms of representation. So if you have any of those, all right, uh, I mean, becoming clear in a manifest manner that mm. as of the time of entering into that contract, there was the commission of an unfair trade practice, of an unfair practice, then as a matter of law, mm. you've got the right to cancel that uh, contract. Give an example of mm. false representation. False representation under the law, uh, they are listed, and there are quite a number of them. Mm. Uh, uh, so, I mean, uh, Section 13, let me just say it in, I mean, in quickly. It is an unfair practice for mm. a person to make a false, misleading, or deceptive representation without limiting the generality of what constitutes a false, misleading, or deceptive representation. The following are included as false, misleading, or deceptive representations. Mm -hmm. So, A, representation that the goods or services have sponsorship, approval, uh, performance, characteristics, accessories, use, ingredients, benefits, or qualities they do not have. Mm. Okay. All right, that's one. So you're <laughs> buying some cooking oil and it says it has vitamin A, 100 mg, uh -huh. and you find the vitamin A is 105 mg. You can complain. False representation. Yeah, I mean, if it is misleading and in any event formed part of the basis upon which you acted, Okay, second. Uh -huh. The other one is a representation that the goods or services are of a particular standard quality, grade, style, or model, uh, if they are not. Mm -hmm. All right? Then a representation that a specific price advantage exists, if it does not. A All specific right? price the advantage. advantage exists, if it does not. Uh, for example... Mm -hmm. So, for example, it's, there's, there's an offer, there's a sale. Yes. They say they've, this is 70% off, mm -hmm. and it's not. Let me give you a clear one. Please. See, uh, you go to a shop. Mm -hmm. They say that the price has reduced from 99 yeah. to 77. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It would be misleading if, indeed, that item has never sold at 99 before. Ah. Uh, you get <laughs> if it has never sold at 99 before <laughs> but what is it it's an offer yeah. uh, no it's not it has, it's an offer yes <laughs> yeah but has it has it ever so they're saying it's 99 cancelled huh? now 77 oh but it was never 99 it has never sold at 99 before <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but now they're saying 77 yeah. uh, how, how would you deal how with would that, you know? deal with that maybe the yeah. thing is actually 77 shilling I mean, the thing, I mean, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't really know, but the fact of the matter is that it never sold for 99 bob before, but okay. they're telling you that they've now reduced the price from 99, 99 to 77 bob. All right, you get that's a problem, okay. Mm. Yeah. Pricing. So the price advantage never existed before, mm. <laughs> all right. Then a representation using as exaggeration, innuendo, or ambiguity as to a material fact, or failing to state a material fact if such. If such use or failure deceives or tend to deceive, all right? 
uh, a representation that misrepresent the purposes or, or intent of any solicitation. Uh, they, they're quite a number, but the most... How to, to go mm. to for banks? Or, oh, for or banks, now. Mm. Yeah, now yeah. we're going to the next one now. It's going to loan. Now, the next one, which is an unfair trade practice, eh? mm. uh, and I'm uh, sorry, unfair practice, false representation, mm -hmm. it is called unconscionable representation as an unfair practice, okay. all right? Okay. Now, when it comes to unconscionable representation, uh, and for you to de determine what unconscionable representation entails, section 14 comes in mm. of the act, right? Mm. And if you allow me, I can quickly state some of the, I mean, some of these things. Under the law, it is an unfair practice to make an unconscionable representation. All right. The following shall be considering shall be considered in determining whether a representation is unconscionable. So, a that the consumer is not reasonably able to protect his or her interest because of disability, ignorance, illiteracy, inability to understand the language of an agreement, or similar factors. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two, that the price grossly exceeds the price at which similar goods or services are readily available to live consumers. Mm -hmm. As an example, mm -hmm. you go to a microfinance institution. Mm -hmm. They tell you, we will give you a loan at 6% interest per month. Mm -hmm. All right? How does 6% uh, uh, feel? Feels very good. Mm. Feels very good. Yeah, right. single digit. <laughs> single digit. Mm. But remember, Eric, it's per month. It is per month. Yeah. Right. So six times twelve. How much is that? Seventy-two. It's seventy-two percent mm. per annum. And it is a loan. What is the CBK lending rate? At the moment, possibly fourteen, fifteen, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right there about. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Then add the markup by bank. So the lending rate at the, in the country right now is about twenty or thereabouts. Mm. Right. So how do you compare twenty and seventy-two? It's incomparable. So read that section of the law again. Yeah. That the price grossly exceed. That the price grossly exceeds the price at which similar goods or services are readily available to like consumers. Ah. To like consumers. This loan mm -hmm. from this particular institution yes. grossly exceeds markets. It absolutely. No other lender in the market uh -huh. is anywhere close to seventy percent. Absolutely. Okay. Right. But mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they stated it. It, it does not matter that they stated it. <laughs> uh, how is it unconscionable representation? Mm. Because uh. it exceeds it exceeds the price at which similar goods because it's about fairness it's about access it's about comparison proportionality and things like that the willing buyer willing seller it's freedom of contract i knew you'd come to that yeah. <laughs> uh, you're not forced Freed yeah yeah freedom of contract uh, uh, the thing is this um, uh, the law of contract basically provides for the manner in which contracts are formed mm -hmm. unfortunately it does not provide for the manner in which these contracts are executed. And the Consumer Protection Act comes in to remedy some of the disadvantages that comes with execution or if not implementation of contracts. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, uh, the fact of the matter is this. The mere fact that you signed the contract has not necessarily oust the jurisdiction of this law. Mm. Remember, contract contract law contract by itself. These are personal laws. It's an agreement between do and myself yeah. for doing to either to do or not to do something. Mm. But remember, it's still subservient to the law of the day. All right. Mm. And before I speak to freedom of contract, let me tell you another thing about it. About the other issues around unconscionable representation, then we come back to to that matter. So uh, the other one is that is that the consumer is unable to receive a, receive a substantial benefit from the subject matter of the representation. Uh, that there is no reasonable prob probability of payment of the obligation in full by the consumer. Remember, at seventy two percent, so you are highly unlikely to be able to repay this yeah. loan. Mm. At seventy two percent, and the lender knows this. <laughs> they, they know you they won't know. pay it. It's predatory it. lending. America, title ya shamba. That's what they're going after. That's what they're going after. Uh, All right. These logbook loans, especially the logbook loans. 
and mm. remember six also eric mm. that the terms of the consumer transactions transaction are so adverse to the consumer to be as to be inequitable all right mm. remember if you've read some of those loan agreements i've read them mm. it's six percent interest uh, per month that yeah. is 72 yeah. percent then they also tell you in the event of default on any installment they start compounding interest which is at the beginning of the week they charge you simple interest at the end of the week they compound that which uh, you've not paid by the end of the week <laughs> you know what? So by the time you look at it, you've mm. borrowed a hundred thousand, but somebody is telling you yes, five okay. months down the line that you owe them eight hundred thousand bob. But it's unallowed yeah. by law. In Where? Duplam. <laughs> well, mm. the in Duplam principle. Yeah. In Duplam principle operates in a manner that is slightly different from this. All right. Okay. In Dum in Duplam principle generally says that you cannot pay, all right? More, More than, than twice, twice what yeah. you've borrowed. Okay. All right. Mm. That, so, so, so the maximum for Induplam is twice, mm. right? So it does not look at the issues around the contract itself. But for consumer protection, we are looking at the, at the we issues. We are looking at the issues. We are looking at even the interest rates. We are looking at the bargaining power of the parties. Okay, well, let's take a break. <laughs> we come back. We'll focus. Right. We, because we have seen there is predatory lending. And in fact, very many people have been complaining. Yes. They went to some of these, uh, you know, here we call them logbook loans. They're very fast loans. They're pay slip loans. Mm -hmm. um, in other markets, they're called the... The, the, what, payday loans, payday loans and, yes. and we've seen a lot of complaints about them mm -hmm. predatory lending but mm -hmm. what does the law say mm -hmm. about the rights of the consumer mm -hmm. okay absolutely we'll come back and talk about it shortly at 26 minutes to 10 Odhiambo Akum is an, a lawyer he's a consumer policy and regulatory compliance expert we are talking about how the law protects consumer interests in this country the consumer protection act of 2012 is what he's quoting um you know extensively here mm -hmm. keep it here we'll be back shortly thank you this is the situation room the only way to start your day get the football you want and get it all on dstv dstv delivers every heart pounding moment every jaw-dropping play and every unforgettable goal experience the passion feel the intensity 